Marissa Nadler, The Path of the Clouds, album review. Let's chat about it. Hey guys, what's going on? Join here for what's spinning here tonight. Chat about this latest from Miss Marissa Nadler, Washington, D.C. based singer songwriter. As far as a modern folk songstress goes, she is one of my most cherished and most favorite artists uh, of the modern era. Her very dreamy, dark, practically gothic approach to folk and singer-songwriter, to me, growing up, was just so refreshing. Now, while not at my favorite work of Marissa, I thought some of her early albums were, you know, likable. I thought The Ballad of the Living and the Dying was a very noble debut. I thought the saga of Mayflower May was actually pretty tortured in parts, and the very wintry songs Three Bird on the Water was very nice as well. But truthfully, it was around the time of her Little Hells album that I thought that Marissa was bringing all of these sounds together, the wintry vocals, the sort of dark, dreary atmosphere. But while, you know, sometimes tortured and genuinely very dark as well, it was always seemingly gorgeous and very accessible and beautiful. Now, I will say this, it hasn't always been Love at First Listen with Marissa. I haven't even enjoyed all of her albums. I mean, personally, I have always thought that her self-titled album was just a little too sunny for me. And I've never really been one for the sister either, to be honest. But I always loved the very eerie, nostalgic July. I love the dreamy film that this album seemingly has oodles of. Yes, I just used the word oodles. And Strangers isn't only her best album, but it's one of my favorite albums of all time. Now... While not mind-blowing, I thought her last studio album, For My Crimes, had a lot going for it. I like the bluesy style. It had some great singles, like I Can't Listen to Gene Clark Anymore and Blue Vapor. But at the end of the day, I did kind of think that Marissa's sound like needed a little jolt. It needed to take that next big leap. Now, that was her last solo album, but she's been busy ever since. She released that really great album with Stephen Brodsky, Drone Flower. She's released a couple of demo projects like Leave the Light On, as well as that covers album that she did earlier this year, the Bandcamp recordings. But I have been so excited to chat about this new album because leading up to it, the singles were really great. Let's chat about it. This album starts off with Bessie Did You Make It, and right off the bat, I am just so sold. Marissa has always been one for making an atmosphere very quick as well. But immediately with this track, I am thrown headfirst into the very dreary, dreamy, black and white world of true crime powered by Marissa Nadler. It's haunting and chilly, but as a lot of times with her music, it's also beautiful. Not only that, but really inviting. I mean, she's come quite a way since her early days where she was just kind of dabbling with being a sort of dark folk artist. But this is mesmerizing. This is awesome. And while I have enjoyed the work that she's put out since Strangers, this to me seems like the next artistic leap. Then we have this album's title track, The Path of the Clouds. On the other hand, this is Marissa Stab at a sort of bluesy funeral dirge. I love the creeping pace and her commanding performance or just about as commanding as her performances can be. I mean, her vocals are so silky, but they are hypnotic. Like, I genuinely can't just seem to do anything else but just sit here and listen to this track with a big smile on my face and just feel at home. Once again, though, there are some artistic leaps. There are some instrumentals on this track that are new and fresh sounding for her. And in her own way, as far as her solo work is concerned, this is some of her heavier material. There's just a lot of majesty to this album. It's very cinematic. Like, I feel like listening to this album that Marissa is performing this fantastic one-woman sort of gothic stage show, and she is the star attraction. It doesn't get any better than Couldn't Have Done the Killing. This is genuinely one of the most compelling tracks here. I think her approach to dealing with true crime stories on this album is done really tastefully. And listen, if you're not into very gothic-tinged, dreary, dreamy, rainy day folk music, this may not be the album for you. But I'm going to sound like a broken record here. This is absolutely hypnotizing. We also get a lot of really cool tracks like If I Could Breathe Underwater featuring Mary Lattimore. 
This is a submersive, kaleidoscopic, ethereal folk odyssey. And as a matter of fact, I should point out, a lot of this album has some really great guests that more often than not bring a lot of just interesting ideas to the table. Just pushing Marissa that little extra step. And here, Mary Lattimore's very interesting approach to sound play and production does just that. This is so easy to drift off into. This is so good. It's so obvious, too. Marissa's music, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it's ever had this much depth, this cinematic edge to it. It has never been this detailed or vivid either. And it's so surreal, too, especially on this track where it gets genuinely odd at times. Elegy, on the other hand, is much more whimsical. It reminds me of the sort of dark fantasy material that we heard on Strangers. With Amber Webber and Mary Lattimore once again by her side, Marissa's doing some really cool stuff here. This is an absolutely flooring ballad. And once again, if you're not into this sort of very dreary folk, I don't blame you. Like, I get it. It's not for everybody. I personally, like, live for this. But as far as a ballad goes, a true blue ballad from Marissa Nadler, this is absolutely breathtaking. Most of this album is. Now, this album is incredible, but if I had to nitpick, Turned Into Air featuring Emma Ruth Rundell is a serious letdown, especially because I I've been on a big Emma kick lately. I mean, I do like the atmosphere of this track. It's very bluesy, it's very smoky. But other elements of this track just aren't nearly as enjoyable. It's not like Emma and Marissa don't have chemistry. They do. Some of their vocal harmonies aren't that bad. But I feel like this track should be a happening. These two coming together, much like Emma Ruth Rundle and Chelsea Wolfe did on that single they released earlier this year. That was a happening. This is just kind of safe, especially compared to the rest of this album. It's also one of the more repetitive tracks here, and that's sad. That being said, though... The rest of this album is really good. I think Marissa has completely outdone herself. I think that this is one of the most cinematic and compelling singer-songwriter albums of the year, and it's not even close. On the other hand, I really didn't need a track like, well, sometimes you can't stay. This is a bluesy, folky jam with an electric tinge to it. And, you know, it's just like the kind of track that needs to like break through the clouds of this album just a little bit. Just wake me up a little bit. Give me a little oomph. It adds a little color to the very monochromatic world of Marissa Nadler. From Vapor to Stardust, on the other hand, is a serious throwback. This reminds me of, like, July or a little Hell's Era Marissa. A little bit more mature, though, as far as songwriting goes, and just a little bit more structured as well. Not only that, but some of the lyrics here are some of the most telling and human on this album, and that's nice. I just, I can't say no to this. Marissa Nadler on tracks like this nestles into my heart and refuses to leave. On the other hand, Storm is practically psychedelic. And you know what? There's a lot of interesting stuff going on here. This is almost like a real old school 70s singer songwriter sound. And honestly, she owns it. Marissa's world, you know, while dreary and very rainy and monochromatic and about 10 other things, you know, that's usually stuff that's very niche and, you know, it's not going to be for everyone, but I feel like her music, including this album, is very easy to access. It's very easy to just dive right in. I can't tell you how happy I am listening to this album and how good it is. And I Dream of Running is a late album treat to say the very least. Uh, this sounds like Marissa Nadler goes to Twin Peaks. It is beautiful. It is euphoric. Uh, Marissa sounds like such a freaking presence on this track. I'm pretty much in awe. And laugh all you want, but Lemon Queen actually almost brought a tear to my eye because it brought me back, man. It brought me back to an earlier time where I was just discovering her music for the first time and falling in love with albums like July and Strangers. It's so wintry. It's got that sort of dark fantasy element to it. And between the chilling vocals, the surreal lyrics, and Marissa's presence on this track and throughout this entire album, like, hell yes. This just scratches all the itches that I had right now. You know what? Deep in my heart, I think I'll always be the guy who loves Marissa Nadler's Strangers the most. But I think she's outdone herself. While that was just, you know, like a cult favorite for mine, it's probably my first Marissa album, it's always going to be my favorite. 
this is going to be a very close second. I think that she has really made a huge artistic leap here. Uh, you know, her music still has this monochromatic film to it, but it's never been this kaleidoscopic, this surreal, this colorful in its own weird way way, her lyrics of true crime, her hypnotic vocals, her presence on this album, the guests she brings on, the production, it is a happening in these genres. If you are into these genres, this is a must listen and I implore you to do so immediately. This thing is awesome. I feel it a decent nine on this album, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, guys.